Right guys, just want to talk about arguing for argument's sake. Um, this is some of that come up the other day, uh, relate to the whole B-Bots thing. And I'm not going to mention names and stuff, because quite simply this is the whole point. I'm trying to avoid all that stuff. Um, unless it's actually going to be focused and positive and actually highlighting anything that's actually fact. Um, I do recommend people stop using that sort of stuff for cheap uh, YouTube hits. Um, what I tried to do, for example, the, the B-Bots thing, I put an article together on how to um, report that sort of crime, um, or assume crime, and then in the sense of it's assumed X, Y, Z. I put an article on my blog. Um, the reason I did that is I did get a couple of people ask me, well, how do you report that? Because that's one of the things I did mention, is the fact is a lot of these people are like, give me that, but at no point did any of them actually report the crimes. Um, I did, and at the same time, I would actually say for Dave, Allo, and whatever. To be honest, they were aware. They were aware I'd have reported them already. You know, not with what Dave and Allo reported Bebos, because um, we'd done that a year earlier. But the tittle tattle goes on relating to he said, she said, and a lot of it is not fact. Um, and that's the sort of stuff I do recommend the expat community sort of pull away from. It's opinions for opinion's sake, in the sense that a lot of it is just tittle tattle, or it's just for YouTube views. Um, there is more constructive stuff you could do, or you can find constructive stuff pretty much in anything. Like I said, even with this, the B-Bots thing, I put an article together explaining how to put it together to pass on to um, law enforcement agencies. The reason I didn't put links to the law enforcement agencies is quite simply, it depends who they are. Uh, Mark Hatley, for example, is Phil Ann, from what I am aware of, and he was in Los Angeles. As such, he could be reported to ICE and was done. He could be reported to Interpol and was done. He could be reported to PMP, Cybercrimes Unit, and was done. And at the same time, you've got to break down what it is you see is wrong. So if you put a video up there, you know, this video, 2 minutes 23, this is going on, and that, this is what concerns me, 3 minutes 15, this is going on, da, da, da. at 4 minutes 12, you can see the man's face, da, 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 and this, and, you know, give them information, they don't need gossip, they don't need hearsay and all that sort of stuff, they'll just dismiss it, and, it, and I, I know there's some village idiots out there, um, they troll and report each other to bloody PMP and stuff. All you're doing is wasting police time. That's it. It doesn't get anybody in any trouble or whatever. All that happens is that you end up wasting everybody's time um, because you didn't like what they said on some YouTube channel or a forum or stuff. Um, analyze what you're doing. That's all I can say on that stuff. Um, I didn't put any links in there because they change. Um, what you have in the Philippines, a lot of time the administration change, you'll get the cybercrime units change, you'll get people that are working on certain things change. So when you try and contact them, they may not be there anymore. That's why I didn't put any links, you need to go and find them. There is forms online for reporting expected crime, suspected crime, not expected crime. Um, and as such, you can engage with various organizations, whether it's ICE, Interpol, and the Philippines. One of the sources I found quite useful was the University of Philippines relating to the child abuse cases and stuff. They have a group in there. Um, I'm not going to expand it out. You can look yourselves. Um, but the point being is they will take action. They will pass the information along if you do not want to engage directly. Because you've got to bear in mind, a lot of time you are not directly involved, and that's why I find bizarre um, with some people that assume that they've suddenly cracked some sort of ring or anything like that. A lot of this stuff is actually done by police work. <laughs> um, this is why I assume it took so long for Mark Hatley to be caught, because they have other stuff going on. As such, it takes time. They're not interested in Mark. Mark will be a bottom feeder in their list. They want all the rest that are associated with it because at the end of the day, they want the money trail. They want the other people involved. They want people that travel to the Philippines. It's not a case of, oh, we've got Mark and that's all. It's not just going to be Philippines law enforcement involved. But that takes as long as it takes. But anyway, 
the main thing here is there is positive stuff to do and there is no saint in the Philippines expat community and be aware that predominantly we're just normal people doing normal lives. We don't have to make them extraordinary. We don't have to do um, expansive, expansive explanations on why I think this guy's wrong or that. It doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, what I think about Seth, for example, does not matter. I just focused on the facts available at the time. Other people are going, he's this, he's that, he's that. Based on what? What, they had a few conversations with somebody on a live chat? <coughs> um, no. That's how you end up with speculation and actually interfering with actual real crimes. Um, my personal view on says is, A, I don't know him that well, but B, he was married for three years and I think he's just found the Philippines, that's it. I do not suspect or expect him to be involved in any activity relating to underage girls at all. Um, Jay, for example, I know is the same. Jay's not interested in underage girls. He may do his um, thing in the Philippines, uh, but at the end of the day, he has zero interest in under, underage. The same as Barry, no interest in that. And the reason I bring this up is a lot of people try to bait things into, oh, they're doing this. You know what? <clears throat> the thing with consenting adults is they're consenting adults. They are not children. They are not minors. They are not people that cannot make their own decisions. They're adults. And whether people like it or not does not make it wrong. What it makes it is an opinion. Now, whether somebody is doing something morally wrong is one thing, and that's a freedom of choice. You don't have to watch it, don't have to listen to it, don't have to talk about it. But when you actually have somebody carrying out illegal acts and um, exploiting people for cash, etc., you're in a whole new realm. But at the same time, it didn't need any YouTube videos on it. What it needed was people to actually take some action. And as I said, um, hello, passed me over some videos and gave me the, said look at this one, look at this one, this one. I went through all the timelines, etc. Passed it on to the PMP, passed it on to Interpol, and passed it on to ICE and other people, and left it at that. It's not for me to phone them up every Tuesday to see if they've done anything yet. Because at the end of the day, your only responsibility, if you want to do something, is reporting a suspected crime. That's it. If you don't like somebody, you don't have to watch their YouTube channel. If you don't like somebody, you don't have to sit and make blogs on them, don't have to make um, memes and other things on them. At the end of the day, there is other stuff out there to be doing. A lot more interesting, a lot more fascinating, a lot more valuable to yourself and other people. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.